Okay, so, um, <clears throat> the reason why I'm going to go through this is not because you're going to be asked a question uh, where you have to name the polynomial. Now, you may have to do it on the quiz, but in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's not that you have to go around naming these things. But the reason why I want you to be familiar with this is because I do use these terms frequently, and so when you hear these terms, you should have a picture of what I'm talking about in your head, okay? Um, so we name them based on two things, their degree and their number of terms. We've got constant, that means there's no variable. Linear means you have just an x quadratic, you have x squared, cubic, x to the third, fourth degree, x to the fourth, so forth and so on. Sometimes this is called quartic. Uh, and then you've got your number of terms, a monomial. Okay, now this is obviously not like a single number or a single variable, um, but it's one single term because these are uh, the negative six and the x to the fifth are connected by multiplication. So that is one single term, that's why it's a monomial. A binomial, you've got two terms because they're separated by a plus here. Uh, I've got an example of a trinomial that uh, has traction in it. And then you can keep going. They kind of use their special names after the trinomial. There are four term, four term monomial, etc. Okay. Uh, my note: you can have any combination of these. Okay. It's not that they pair up. It's not that a constant um, or that a monomial is always a constant. No, a constant is always a monomial. Um, but um, other than that, you can have any combination because really the examples that I gave over here for the degrees. Those are all monomials, right? Um, but you can have a uh, cubic binomial, okay? You can have a, uh, well, you can't have a quadratic. Yeah, you can have a quadratic trinomial, x squared, x, and a constant. Um, so you can, you can mix those up in just about any form or fashion. Um, now, you can't have a linear trinomial. That's impossible because uh, you don't have enough terms. But anyways, so let's go through just a few examples here. Now, these five through eight, uh, these are not in standard form, okay? These are not in standard form. So uh, we're used to seeing it where the highest degree comes first and then it goes in descending order. So in this case, we do, we may need to look around a little bit um, to figure out exactly how to name it, okay? So that first one, first of all, look at the degree. Okay, the highest power is 2, so this is a quadratic. And we have 1, 2, 3 terms because we're separated by subtraction twice. This is a quadratic trinomial. Number 6. The highest power is four. So this is a fourth degree. As I mentioned before, sometimes people will call it quartic. But most of the time they just call it fourth degree. And we've got one, two, three, four terms. So fourth degree, four term polynomial. And of course, poly means many. No meal is terms, so many terms. Number seven, very simple example. Uh, one, okay, one is a constant, there's no variable, and it is a single term, so that is a constant monomial. Number eight, degree six, six degree. And there are two terms, so that is a binomial. All right, pretty simple there, so let's keep going. When we add and subtract polynomials, okay, for the most part, I'm pretty sure you already know how to do this. But there are a few things, few common mistakes that people make time and time again. Number one, do not forget to apply the negative to all terms that follow after the subtraction. So, for example, in number nine, when we have these two sets of parentheses, these two trinomials, and we're subtracting, we don't just drop the parentheses um, and leave that minus. second trinomial and then combine all terms. So that's mistake, most common mistake number one. Um, and 
constant term. So let's look at number nine there. Okay. Um, I'm just going to drop the parentheses for the first term, and I'm going to go ahead and put it in standard form, okay, because it's not. Uh, now, this is not something you have to do. I'm just doing it for the sake of uh, kind of helping myself keep things linear here, okay. And then I'm going to apply that negative to all the terms in my second set of parentheses. So 5n cubed was positive, so it becomes negative. 4 into the fourth, and I didn't put that in standard form, but it's okay. 4 into the fourth was negative, so it becomes positive. And then 4n was also negative, so it becomes positive. And then we simply need to combine our like terms. So look for the highest powered uh, term, 4 into the fourth. There is no other term that is raised to the fourth power, so that's going to come first. We do have two terms that are n cubed, so we've got 7 minus 5, so we have 2 n cubed. Uh, we don't have any quadratic terms, we don't have any n squared. Uh, our linear term, the n, we've got negative 4 n plus 4 n, so those cancel. And then we are left with uh, a constant, the only one, so we've got plus 7 there on the end. Okay, now something like number 10, when there's no subtraction there, when we've just got two sets of parentheses with a plus in between, really the only thing we have to do is drop the parentheses. Um, and I'm not going to go through writing this twice, I'm just going to combine like terms. So my highest power is x cubed. So we've got negative x cubed in the first set of parentheses plus 2x cubed in the second. So negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1. So we've got positive 1x cubed. We don't have a quadratic term. Again, no x squared. Uh, linear term, we have 5x plus 7x. So 5 plus 7 is 12. And then constant, we have negative 6 plus 7. So we've got plus 1 there on the end. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, and notice it's not because of the coefficient, it's because of the exponent. All right, number 11, same premise. We've just got a little bit more going on because we have three sets of parentheses. We have a trinomial plus a four-term polynomial plus a binomial, um, but we're still going to pair things up the same way. So let's do this. Um, what's our highest power? N to the fourth is our highest power. So we've got a negative 8 into the fourth in the first set of parentheses plus 8 into the fourth in the second set of parentheses. So those cancel each other out. But then in the last set of parentheses, we've got minus 3 into the 4th because there was a minus in front of that set of parentheses. So we have negative 3 into the 4th. Let's look at our uh, cubic term. We have negative 6 in cubed in the first set, minus 7 in cubed in the second set, so that's negative 13. And there isn't a cubic term in the last one, so we've got negative 13 in cubed. The quadratic term, 8n squared plus 3n squared, so we have 11n squared. And then in the last set, we've got minus a negative, so that's plus 6. So we've got 11 plus 6, we have 17n squared. We have a linear term. I do not see one. I don't. Uh, and then we have a constant term. We've got that eight, last term there. Now, um, you've noticed that I've been underlining my terms as I've been combining them. I do suggest doing that, especially when you have this many, so that you don't miss something. Okay, you don't want to leave a term out. All right, one more together, and then I'm going to turn you loose on a little bit of practice, and then we will look at multiplying. Okay, so this one, 
Same as number 11, the minus sign's just in a different place. So our highest power is x to the fourth. It's in our second set of parentheses. Um, so it was minus a negative, so that's positive 4x to the fourth. So let's go down to cubic. We have negative 4x cubed in the first set of parentheses, minus 6x cubed in the second set of parentheses, so that's minus 10. And then we've got plus 4 on the end, so minus 6x cubed. No quadratic term. Linear term, we have minus 7x minus 6x, because that's in the second set of parentheses, so that's negative 13x, and there's nothing in the third set there. And then finally, our constant term, minus 4 plus 5, so that's plus 1 plus 3, we got plus 4.